Hello and welcome to our next wine tasting video with Avery's. My name is Frank and today we are focusing on probably one of the most famous wine producing regions in the world of Bordeaux. It's an area steep with a lot of history with some highly sought after wines, wines that can command some eye-watering prices as well. But that is only part of the story. It's one of the largest producing wine regions in the world so we will find a range of different styles being produced as well as wines from different price points from the everyday drinkers right up to the once in a lifetime opportunities of drinking some of the first growths. Bordeaux is an area famed for blending grape varieties together. The main two red grape varieties are Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Cabernet Sauvignon gives you more darker fruits, black currant, black berries, as well as mint, cassis, and sometimes bell pepper. Merlot gives you more red fruit, so mainly plum, but also hints of chocolate and sometimes violets. By blending the two together, you increase the complexity and variety of aromas on show, but the most important element is really on the palate. Cabernet Sauvignon is a great variety that is very high in tannin and acidity, so on its own can sometimes feel very dry and bitter, especially across the roof of the mouth. It also takes many decades to mature due to the high levels of tannin. Merlot, however, has lower levels of tannin and acidity, so by blending the two together, you make the wine feel softer and smoother, as well as also accelerating the maturity so it can be drunk a little bit sooner. Complexity isn't the only reason for blending grape varieties together in Bordeaux. There's a more practical reason as well. Cabernet Sauvignon is a very late ripening varietal, and Bordeaux is as far north latitude-wise as it can be comfortably planted. It means that we often refer to Bordeaux as a marginal climate, meaning that in those poorer vintages, Cabernet may not get to its full potential, leading to some underripe fruit characteristics, as well as some green, harsh-feeling tannins. By allowing Merlot into your blend, and by not restricting the amount that you can add, it means that each Bordeaux house is able to produce wine every vintage. This is why you rarely find grape variety written on the label. However, you can draw some conclusion as to where the vineyard is within Bordeaux. Bordeaux is split into three main areas, the left bank, right bank, and the entre de mer. This is all in accordance to which side the vineyards sit as the river splits into the Dordogne and the Giron, with the left bank focusing mainly on Cabernet Sauvignon and the right bank focusing mainly on Merlot. Therefore, if you see Omedoc, saint Estef, Pouliac, saint Julien, Margot, or Pesat Lejean on the label, all of those are on the left bank. So therefore you should expect a higher level of Cabernet Sauvignon in the blend. Whereas if you see saint Emilion or Pomerol on the label, both on the right bank, then you should expect Merlot to be the dominant grape variety. That central area of Entre de Mer, or between two seas, is where we find the majority of everyday drinking Bordeaux wines usually labelled as just Bordeaux AC, or Appellation Controlling. These are soft, smooth, earlier drinking wines at sensible pricing. The dominant grape variety here will be Merlot, as it's the earlier ripening varietal. It does make it easier and slightly cheaper to produce. These wines will see little to no oak aging, and are great as a midweek treat, or to accompany most dishes. Oak aging throughout the rest of Bordeaux is very important with some of those higher end wines spending anywhere between 12 and 30 months in French oak. The longer it spends in oak, the more chance it has to integrate with the oxygen. This will help soften the tannins, which is vital for some of those Cabernet heavy blends. It also helps add complexity to the wine. Oak flavors will be added of vanilla, cedar, toast, charred wood, clove, nutmeg, but after three or four years, those flavours start to diminish and the oak barrel will need replacing. Oak barriques of 225 litres, the standard size in Bordeaux, cost anywhere between five and 600 euros each. This might help to explain why certain wines are a little bit more expensive than others. Bordeaux is certainly known for producing some very expensive wines. And if you get the chance to taste them, they are a joy, pleasure and privilege to taste especially if someone else has paid. There is a hierarchy within Bordeaux known as the 1855 classification. This is from when Napoleon III wanted to rank all of the current chateaus by their level of quality. 
The A was split into five levels of classed growths, uh, with only four chateaus at the very top, known as the first growths. These are the Feet, the Tour, Margot, and Aubryon. And this list hasn't changed in all that time, other than once, when Chateau Mouton Rothschild went from a second up to a first. While the ranking hasn't changed in all that time, size, ownership, and quality has. So it's worth doing a little bit of research before dropping lots of cash on these wines. Another thing to consider is that there's been a fair few new estates to appear since 1855, but they've been left out of the classification. They have their own separate quality level, known as the Cru Bourgeois. And this is where you can still find high level of quality, but a slightly less painful pricing. They'll be stated on the label, like our own Avery's own label one here, on the bottom there, Cru Bourgeois, and on the back label hopefully as well. Now these have to go through a taste test every vintage to maintain that high level of quality. So they are worth looking out for. Another style to look for within Bordeaux are the whites and the sweets, an often overlooked and forgotten style, but they are exceptional and worth looking for, focused around two main varietals of Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc. The Semillon adds the rich ripe stone fruit aromas, as well as giving the wine a rich full body. The Sauvignon Blanc adds acidity, freshness and citrus aromas. The areas focused are mainly towards the southern part of Bordeaux, below the city itself, in the area of Grave and Pessat Légion for the premium dry whites, and Sautern for the premium sweets. Sautern is home to some of the most famous sweet wines in the world, with estates like Ikem and Riasek. Just like the best dessert wines of Germany, these wines are affected by Botrytis, or noble rot. This thins out the skins, allows the water to evaporate, and concentrates the sugars. It also allows beautiful aromas to develop of dried stone fruit, honey, and marmalade. As botrytis is very difficult to control and maintain, each estate does produce a dry wine as well. These wines are worth hunting down as they are exceptional examples of top quality winemaking from top teams and estates at sensible-ish pricing. I have here the G de Girard from Chateau Girard, which is a 50-50 split of Semillon and Sauvignon, and is then aged in one-year-old Sautern barrels. This gives the wine an extra degree of richness and complexity, and an extra level of deliciousness. Hopefully this is a lot to go on when you're now considering Bordeaux. As I said, it is a very large area to look at, and without turning this into a four-hour video, I'd still like you to be able to discover some of those new areas. I mentioned lots of well-known and premium regions, but if you would like to discover something a little bit different, look for some of those lesser-known regions like moulis en medoc Le Côte de Castillon, Le Land de Pomerol, Blay and Borg for some of those hidden gems. Happy hunting, enjoy the Bordeaux, and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers, goodbye.